Analyzing malware using PowerShell commands can be a complex and sensitive process, as it involves interacting with potentially harmful code. Here are 8 necessary PowerShell commands and techniques used for analyzing malware. In the search tab, type PowerShell and run it as an administrator. GetNet TCP Connection This command retrieves information about active TCP connections, which can help identify any unusual network activity caused by malware. Many types of malware establish TCP connections to remote servers for command and control purposes. By inspecting the output of GetNet TCP connection, analysts can detect unauthorized connections to external servers, which may indicate the presence of malware communicating with AC2 server. GetNet UDP endpoint. Similar to GetNet TCP connection, this command retrieves information about active UDP endpoints, useful for detecting suspicious network activity. Malicious software often exhibits unusual network behavior to evade detection or achieve its objectives. By monitoring active UDP endpoints with GetNet UDP endpoint, analysts can detect anomalous traffic patterns. These indicators may signal the presence of malware on the network. Get content. Replace C colon backslash path backslash to backslash file with the actual path to the file whose contents you want to retrieve. Copy the path of the file and paste it in the command. This command reads the contents of a file, useful for examining the contents of suspicious files. Malware may store sensitive data, such as credentials, encryption keys, or payload payloads, within files on the system. Get content allows analysts to extract and analyze the data contained within suspicious files, enabling them to identify potential data exfiltration, data theft, or reconnaissance activities conducted by the malware. Get my object. Type, get my object and press enter. Then type, win32 underscore BIOS. Malware often attempts to persist across system reboots by modifying the BIOS or UEFI firmware. By checking the BIOS version, you can identify any discrepancies or unauthorized changes. If you notice unexpected BIOS versions or alterations, it could be an indicator of malicious activity. Get child item. Replace C colon backslash path backslash to backslash directory with the actual path to the directory you want to inspect. Copy the file of the preferred folder and paste it in the command. This command lists files and directories in a specified location, allowing you to inspect file system changes that might be caused by malware. Get event log. Type, get event log. Log name system entry type error. Retrieves event log entries, which can provide information about system activities that might be related to malware. Event logs are a rich source of forensic data that capture various system events, such as process creation, network connections, logon events, and system modifications. Get event log enables analysts to retrieve event log entries related to these activities, allowing them to reconstruct the timeline of events leading to a malware infection and identify the initial entry point of the malware. Get process. This command lists all running processes on the system. It's useful for identifying suspicious processes that might be associated with malware. Malware often operates as a process on the infected system. By comparing the list of processes obtained from get process against a baseline of known good processes, analysts can easily identify anomalies or deviations that may indicate the presence of malware. Testnet connection. Type, testnet connection, computer name, server name, import number. Replace server name with the host name or IP address of the server you want to test connectivity to and a port number with the port number you want to test. This command checks network connectivity to a specified server and port, useful for identifying potential command and control servers used by malware. Malware often uses specific ports for communication with command and control servers or other malicious endpoints. Testnet connection enables analysts to scan for open ports on remote servers, allowing them to identify ports commonly associated with command and control protocols. 
By testing network connectivity to these ports, analysts can uncover potential C2 infrastructure used by malware.